Today is tutorial time. What is the difference between time lapse, hyperlapse, and motion lapse? How do we set them up with DJ Osmo Mobile 2 gimbal and Android phone? In my case, Samsung Galaxy S6. And for those watching my channel first time, my name is Zdenka Darola. I work as a photographer, I'm a former model and few other things. I make tutorials, fun vlogs, so don't forget to hit the subscribe button. My question is, how are you doing today? Are you smiling? <laughs> Let's get right into it. Let me grab my favorite tool, which is DJI Osmo Mobile 2 gimbal, and of course, my phone, which is Samsung Galaxy S6. Yeah, I know, I should upgrade soon. Thinking about it, saving for it, working on it. <laughs> so what is time-lapse, hyperlapse, and motion-lapse? Well, I'll tell you, it's no slow motion. It is the opposite. It is a fast speed video captured over a long period of time. So for example, you capture sunset for 30 minutes and then you play it very fast, like under a minute. Or sunrise, the same thing. You capture it for 30 minutes and then you play it fast. Let me explain the difference between time-lapse, hyperlapse, and motion-lapse. Let's start with the first one, which is time-lapse. Time-lapse is used when you want to capture something stationary. The best thing is to use a tripod, simply set up at the location, open DJI Go app, select video mode and hit time-lapse. To get that beautiful time-lapse going, you will need to set up interval and duration of video recording. And here comes the question most of the beginners are wondering about. What interval to choose? Generally, if you want to capture fast movement, such as clouds or crowd of people walking by, you want to use two or three or four frames a second setting. Basically anything below four. This means that it will snap frame more often. And for slow movements, such as clouds moving very, very slow in the sky or sunrise and sunset, you want to go with a little bit higher frame rate, which would be five to nine. So anything about five is good. That means it will snap frame or photo less often. Now, this is creative, right? So as I always say in photography, there are really no rules. You should, be, you should be playing around, you should have fun, you should try different things. So try different frame rates. You can follow what I told you here, but you can come up with something on your own. Try different speeds and see what you like, what works for you. Uh, what is your personal taste, what your eye likes. Next step, you should be deciding how long do you want the final time-lapse to be. You know, it takes a long time to create time-lapse, so if you have the time, you can be there the whole day. If you don't, then you really want to think about the final length. I personally go with uh, 12 to 16 seconds time-lapse. It is long enough for me to work with it when I'm editing the final video. I can use the whole piece or I can actually use just a little piece um, or to choose whatever looks best in the time-lapse. One important thing you want to do with your phone when you're doing time-lapse is put it in the airplane mode. If you're filming, let's say 30 minutes time-lapse, somebody calls you, it will shut off and you will have to start all over. And yeah, I, for example, I don't have the time to be there the whole day to keep doing time-lapses all over, all over. I get a few phone calls here and there. So put it in the airplane mode and you have the guarantee that you have to do it only once. Just like I said before, it is very creative. So you should try to play with different frame rates. Now, personally, myself, I prefer a bit smooth time lapses. I don't go as crazy. So my intervals are usually 0 0.5, 1 or 2. Then I look at the final time of time lapse and I select the duration accordingly. 
And of course, if I want to capture really slow movement in a time lapse, then I have to go a little bit faster with the frame rate, which would be four or five and up. Moving on, when do you use hyperlapse? Whenever you don't have this on a tripod, when you're moving, when you're holding it and you're walking or driving, well, not driving, you're sitting next to the driver, you are the one, you're the passenger. That's when you're holding and doing the hyperlapse. <laughs> From my experience, I actually found that it works the best if you choose some large objects such as building, lock it up, and then you move closer towards it. If you are walking, just do it steadily and very smooth movements. Finally, we get to the last one, which is motion lapse. And I gotta say, this is my favorite. When you use motion lapse, if you want to capture a really big scene, it doesn't matter if it's nice or ugly, basically you want to start over here and you end up somewhere over there, that's when you use motion lapse. So let's go ahead and set up the motion lapse, hit the mode where it says motion lapse. And here you will be able to select up to five positions. So here, let's say select one here, then we'll turn this way and we'll select position number two, number three, number four, number five. Depends how many you want to select. Then obviously you will have to choose your interval and duration of your motion lapse. And next you just need to step back or sit back and enjoy watching your gimbal as it does it for you. And it's pretty cool to actually watch it as it moves from one point to the other. So that's it all my friends. I hope you get something out of it. If you like the video, please don't forget to give it thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like these. There's a lot more coming up when it comes to photography and videography. If you have any questions or comments, or would like to request a video on a certain topic or simply want to say hello please do so below in the video description below you know i read them all and i will definitely respond again thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one ciao ahoy